Eight weeks ago, I was standing here filming part one of cover crops in the garden. Today, I wanna to give you an update. In this video, part two, we're gonna talk about the progress that we've made and I'm gonna show you some okay, good, and great results we've had with the cover crop. This cover crop is gonna be helping us build our soil and grow even more food next season. If we haven't met yet, I'm Amy Landers with GardensThatMatter.com, where we believe your garden is the key to better food, a better life, and a better planet. And if you haven't had a chance to see part one, you can look with this video, we'll include links to it down below and in a card so that you can go back and revisit that. In that video, we opened with Colby putting out seed in the area behind me. It was basically bare soil, and you can see now how lush and green it is. In video one, you get to learn about what cover crops are, the benefits of them, and exactly how Colby and I use them to prepare our soil in fall for spring planting. Today, we are gonna go take a closer look at that area that Colby planted, but first I wanna show you two other areas that we planted. Here we are in our first spot. If you'll remember, the orchard was pretty much bare soil because the chickens had been in this area eating all the vegetation off the top. And so we have got some really nice green growth. The, germ the seeds germinated well, it's up, but it's a little sparse and it hasn't grown in really thickly. It's gonna do the job of protecting the soil over the winter, it's gonna be building the soil, but come springtime, we may wanna replace this with something perennial that can take a little bit more shade. It's a little too shady here in the orchard for both the cover crop, and it's actually not great for the orchard either, for the fruit trees. So this winter we may do some work taking, up, uh, taking off lower limbs and maybe taking out a few of the trees that have grown in and shaded this area. Second location for our cover crop is Grandpa's garden. And you can see it's doing really well. And when we measure it, we see about twice as much growth as we had in the orchard. Now this is the area that is under tillage. It gets tractored a couple times a year. Grandpa loves his tractor. And this cover crop is really doing a good job of holding the soil in place over the winter, protecting it, and adding some structure to the soil that it might not otherwise have if it was just bare all winter long. Now this is what I would call our good results. Next, let's take a look at the great results. So here we are in our third spot, and as you can see, here we've got even better growth. This is what I would call our great results. So this area is our no-till beds. We had grass growing in this area, it was basically fallow, and then we covered it with some plastic over the summer and solarized it and then planted it. And so the soil structure here is really pretty good, and so these plants were able to get in there and just really take off and get some good growth in. They're also in full sun, which makes a big difference, right? They have all the sun they need, and they've just been growing over the last eight weeks, and we've got this beautiful biomass to result from it. So let's take a closer look at what we've got growing here. First, let's talk about our grasses. In this mix, we've got three types of grass. We've got oats, triticale, which is a winter wheat, and some rye grass. Now that grass is in there growing and holding the soil. It's gonna make nice mulch in the spring. Some of it will survive through the winter and start growing again in early spring. And all of it, all grasses have nice fibrous roots. And so we know they're feeding the soil microbes, the bacteria and the fungi, putting exudates out. And as those roots die back, that will add organic matter to the soil. It helps hold the soil, prevent erosion. Grasses are a good thing to have in a mix like this. Next, let's talk legumes. These are nitrogen fixing legumes. We're gonna start with winter pea, nice curly cues at the ends. Winter pea is working out there. It will definitely survive our winter unless we get a crazy cold freeze. And so this will be back in the spring growing and producing nitrogen, putting nitrogen down into the soil. We've got two other legumes in the mix hairy vetch and crimson clover. Like the winter pea, these have nitrogen fixing bacteria in their roots and little nodules in their roots. They're gonna be producing nitrogen, pulling nitrogen out of the air. Those bacteria provide it for the plant. And then as the plant goes through its life cycle, when it dies back and when its roots die back, that nitrogen becomes available for the plants that we put here next. So these are great nitrogen fixers to have in our cover crop mix. Last but not least, we've got some root crops like a turnip. These are uh, Barkant turnips and it's a forage turnip. 
So they can be grown for livestock. In this case, we're growing them for those nice leafy greens. Those are gonna provide good mulching material on the top of our soil out here. And then those turnips, are gonna do are gonna be growing down you can see it has a pretty long root and it's it's broken off there it's going even deeper and so that's going down breaking up any compaction in the soil and this root will decompose once it freezes and the plant dies back that root will decompose adding more organic matter to the soil we've got one more root crop in here daikon radish even deeper it almost looks like a carrot so again, we could eat this. This is an edible radish. Um, in this case, we'll probably eat some. We'll let the chickens have some, and some we will feed to the soil microbes. We'll leave them in the soil to decompose, feeding all those nutri all those microbes, the bacteria and the fungi in the soil as they decompose. So again, breaking up compaction and adding biomass. Really good things in a cover crop. Now that fall is here, we're definitely having frosts, and these plants can take some frost. They are cold hardy varieties that we selected especially for planting in fall so that they can grow through the fall over winter, probably mostly dormant, but some of them will still be green. This area behind me will still be green in winter. In the hard freeze, some of these species will die off, but that's okay. Their leaves will become mulch to protect the soil and the other plants that are growing here. Come spring, they will perk back up. Lots of the plants in this mix will pick their growth back up in early spring, give us some really nice growth, and then we will either mow it or roll it down, and potentially in grandpa's garden, we'll till it back into the soil. Here, we'll use it as a, as a mulch on top and plant into it ready to grow our next season's garden. Now, if you wanna know more about cover crops, definitely check out part one, and over at gardensthatmatter.com, we have even more garden goodness for you. You can sign up to get emails, take a class, check out more videos and blog posts. If you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe so you can get future ones. And let me know with a like or a comment down below. Have you tried cover crops? How'd they work for you? Tell me about it in the comments. Or if you have a question, ask below. We'll either answer it in the comments or in a future video. As always, thank you for watching. And until I see you again, happy gardening. parts of this you're going to use to embarrass me at the end. Probably that part. All of it. <laughs>